Look at how huge that is. It's bigger than my hand. So where did mushrooms like stem from? Possibly outer space or somewhere else. Have you ever met anybody with a passion for mushrooms? No. He was so smart and it was so cool and I have yes. a profound new respect for mushrooms. We also have oh, some man. king trumpets. Those things are so cool. Beautiful. To think that this grows in nature is so crazy. Yeah, they're just growing right out the, the front of the bag where I've sliced it. Mushrooms will find an area where they sense oxygen and humidity, and they'll just grow right out. The whole process of growing mushrooms is extremely scientifically so difficult. Science so this is the incubation area. Okay. After they come out of inoculation, they come to sit here until they're colonized. How many strains are in this little corridor here? Basically, there's around 10 to 15 different strains in here at any given okay. time. The mushrooms that Mike is making, they're cultivated basically in a laboratory. And the ones he makes are obviously, they look very different. So right now we're in the clean room slash lab. This is the room where all the clean work occurs. The inoculation of all the sterilized substrates and also the tissue culturing and the propagation of the spawn that we use to, to grow out all of our mushrooms. This is spawn. That's, this has been grown out with a mushroom mycelium. So what is actually in this? This is a mixture of whole wheat and a water and then basically it's been sterilized and then a mushroom mycelium has been uh, planted in here. Every other word I had to have him define because I was learning a new vocabulary. Yeah, this is a plate that's been grown out with uh, the mushroom mycelium and I'll, I'll take sectors of it and toss it into a sterilized bag. And then uh, after about two weeks, it fully colonizes. This was inoculated on 9-5, so now it's ready to go and I can use this to inoculate about 20 to 30 bucks just from this bag. This is complicated. This yeah. is some serious science. Yeah, definitely. It's a process, right? He told us that they know of over a million types of mushrooms. Some theories pointing to the mushrooms came from space, how the spores can survive very harsh climates, extreme colds and extreme hots. Maybe uh, mushrooms landed here on like an asteroid or something. One thing he did point out was <coughs> different mushrooms do have different flavors. So some might taste more like a little bit nutty, like cashew, and some might taste a little bit more like poultry, like a turkey. I had never really only tried white button mushrooms, which I yeah. am not a fan of. Yeah. Shiitake and portobellos. There's so many different ways they grow different shapes, sizes, colors than those traditional grocery store mushrooms. And the thing with his is that they have a lot more nutrients than the normal mushrooms you might pick up at the grocery store. That's a super medicinal mushroom. It's uh, used primarily for, it's not an edible, it's not used in any kind of culinary way. So you'd basically use it by breaking up the mushroom and uh, boiling it into a tea. It's able to boost the immune function. But it helps with like inflammation too. I, my grandma's 85 and she has arthritis pretty bad. And then once I introduced her to this stuff, it's like she needs it every week. She's yeah. always calling me. And it also promotes like dreams. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. You have yeah. some wild dreams? You have some pretty cool dreams when you take it. And uh, yeah, they get pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Can you save me some every week? I'll save week? you some. Every week mm -hmm. on Saturdays, I'll yeah, pick it up. I'll save you some of that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, not a problem. The whole place was like so sterile. So sterile. I put more rubbing alcohol on my hands than I ever have in my entire life. Yeah, so we're gonna take our spawn bag and basically just clean it off. Basically you wipe it down, make sure that uh, it's just clean. You don't want any other uh, spores that have landed on it or whatnot to land into the substrate. So after that, you basically, yeah, this will just get broken down. Sometimes the bags can break and like the stuff will spill out. So you can, you, what do you do? I have to throw it away. Yeah, you can't even use it because um, this is a sterile environment inside of here. And as long as I keep my work in front of this station, everything is clean. So what, what is this? What's this it is, doing? This is a laminar flow hood. So this is bringing the air in through the top through a pre-filter and it's pushing it out through a 99.999% effective HEPA filter. So nothing can make it through this filter except sterile air. So yeah, we'll start the process now. Okay. So our bags have been sterilized. 
Now we'll just open them up. And then that's it. That's it? That's it. And then after that, it gets put in front of the fluid. We kind of inflate the bag just a little bit with the sterile air. And we seal it. So why do you want air to be inside the bag? It creates this nice plenum. So we have air in there. And then it's going to make it easy to disperse all the grains throughout the sawdust to mix the spawn. Take each bag, and then you mix it. I'm an expert bag shaker, but I don't want to break the bag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hold it like a baby. That's how you do it, right? One thing I didn't know is that you have to cook them in order to get all of the nutrients. The cell walls of the mushrooms are built in a way that you need heat to break them down mm -hmm. for us to get the nutritional value out of the mushrooms. Now we're gonna make a mushroom medley, so a little bit of variety of the mushrooms that Mike has grown. A little bit of oil and 10 to 20 minutes and you're ready to eat some mushrooms. is the reason that he transfers them to the oak and sets them up in the grow room the way he does is because it mimics how they would grow on trees. Oh, they're so beautiful already. Yeah, so those are the Piopino mushroom. Uh, we'll just put this somewhere on our shelf. And when those ones are fully done, or fully fruited, they kind of look like that. Wow. So this is a second flush. Um, after you harvest the mushrooms, they kind of keep growing until they're depleted. The sawdust is all So wiped you'll take out. the tops off and then they'll, you'll just let them grow more. Exactly. You'll just leave them in here. Like these were all harvested. And then like within the next week, I'll have more mushrooms growing out of, out of all these bags. That tent was super cool. It felt like something from out of this universe when you open it and yeah. all the humidity, humidity comes out, except it totally ruined my hair. Now we have our humidity kicking on. So this uh -huh. is our keeps the climate and the humidity at, at, at the proper proper levels. There's a couple basically ultrasonic discs in there uh -huh. that uh, create like these vibrations in the water that send out a whole bunch of droplets that are really small, they're like 0.2 microns in size. Wow. And that's being mixed with like fresh filtered air from outside. So I have air coming in through two filters and then it comes in through the tubing and then it goes right into the to the water and it just mixes with, with uh, fresh water. Did you make this? Yep, yeah, I built that myself. It's pretty easy to make, so, yeah. So cool. It was so easy to take, to harvest the mushrooms. You oh, just yeah. push against and then lift up and they come right off in chunks. So yeah, when you're just harvesting, we're just gonna peel them right off. Wow, that's it. That's it, basically. I found the best way to harvest is you could either, well, with these ones, I kind of like to just grab it at the base. Okay. It kind of just pull up and just slides right off. Ooh, oh, yeah. that was so easy. Yeah, exactly. So that's that. And it all just comes off. You just kind of twist them out. Beautiful harvesting. Good job. Easy. Here we go. It's a lot of mushroom. How much would a thing like this cost you? Probably be about like eight dollars. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. I've actually never had like a mushroom medley like this. Once you cooked them down, they kind of all just appear the same color of brown. Cheers! Let's <laughs> eat some mushrooms. These are really good. These are really good. Mm-hmm. Mm, because mm -hmm. I can definitely taste that, that nuttiness to that cashew, that flavor. Here's the lion's mane. I think. Lion mane. Lion's uh. mane. Oh my gosh, the flavor is intense. The texture is kind of crabby. It's like crab, yeah. And the flavors kind of all work together, but you can tell that each of them has like its own characteristics. Chestnut is really crispy. Oh, mine was really smooth. Not crispy. Like. There's, <laughs> did you spit on me? Mmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are great. So how did you get into this? got into it at 15. I just became very fascinated with mushrooms out of nowhere. 
picked up a couple of uh, books and started reading on them and uh, I was just blown away by uh, how something can start out so small and uh, basically take over just basically anything. Unique benefits for the planet and all that stuff was really intriguing. So I started growing mushrooms at 16 and just became like really hooked on the process. Uh, I noticed that mushroom production is lacking out here. Like there wasn't any mushroom farms that I could really visit or go work for or anything like that. So I was like, let's, I'll just start my own. Mike is really transforming perspectives on what mushrooms are and how to grow them, especially in this region where mushrooms don't naturally grow, but he's found a way to bring it to his local community so everybody can enjoy these mushrooms mm -hmm. fresh and grown in the best way possible. And it's a very unique way to add to your nutrition benefits as well. So like mushrooms, obviously a fungus, but you get your protein, you get some carbs, you get all, all the things that are good for you, just not in a typical source. I think what I learned from this experience at Southwest Mushrooms is it's more than worth it to invest in your health in really quality products. And I definitely want to be eating more mushrooms, not the ones you can get at the grocery store, but the ones that are supplied by local farmers that you can get at farmer's markets. These gourmet variety of mushrooms have more of those nutrients, more of those vitamins, more of those kind of medicinal properties that you're not getting in your traditional mushroom. There's ways with the powdered forms, the teas, the mushroom elixirs that are popular for you to incorporate the health benefits of mushrooms without having to eat mushrooms. You're gonna be healthier for it and then the condition of life you're going to lead is going to be better. It'll save you in the long run. As it I say. will save yeah. you in the long run. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching our mushroom farm extravaganza video. If you wanna learn about growing other types of foods, you should check out this video where we went to an aeroponic vertical tower garden. It is the future.